In this session, we are going to discuss one of the most important topics from quantitative aptitude and that is percentages. Percentages is so important because there are various other topics like profit and loss, simple interest and compound interest and data interpretation where the questions are based on the concepts of percentages. So if you are strong in this particular topic, solving questions from other topics will become easy for us. So let's first understand what is meant by a percentage. Percent means per hundred or for every hundred. That is nothing but out of every hundred. And we very well know that percentage is denoted by the symbol as shown here. And it, in short, it can be taken as PC, which means per cent. For example, let's say 94%. 94% is nothing but 94 out of 100. So that is what the definition says. Percent means per 100. 94 per 100 or 94 for every 100. Or we can say 94 out of 100. Similarly, when we say 85%, it means 85 out of 100. Or let's say it is 12%, 12 PC, which means 12%. It is nothing but 12 out of 100. So from all these values, you can see that percentages are nothing but fractions. Every percentage can be taken as a fraction where the denominator is always 100. So on one other way of defining percentages, percentage is a fraction where the denominator is 100 and the numerator is called rate percent. So we can also say that percentage is a fraction where the denominator is 100. Where the denominator is always equal to 100. And the numerator is called rate percent. So, this definition again is an important point which will be used in various other topics. So, percentage is nothing but per 100 or out of every 100, and it can be taken as a fraction where the denominator is equal to 100. Before we discuss the various concepts from percentages, let us first understand what is the significance of percentage or why is this concept of percentage used. Let us assume there are two students A and B. In A's exam, he has scored 60 marks, whereas in B's exam, B has scored 80 marks. Now, can you tell me who is a better student? Is it A or B? When we look at the marks, the obvious conclusion is B is a better student than A. Why? Because he has scored 80 marks, which is more than the marks scored by A. That is equal to 60. But friends, remember that comparison can never be done with the actual marks. For example, here, our conclusion that B is a better student may be wrong. Let's say the marks scored by A, that is 60, is out of 100. That means the maximum marks in A's exam were 100, whereas the marks scored by B, that is 80, is out of 200. So very clearly, A's maximum score can be 100 and B's maximum score can be 200. So A has scored 60 marks out of 100, whereas B has scored 80 marks out of 200. So now, when we actually try to compare their marks, keeping in mind the maximum scores, we come out with a conclusion that not B, but A is a better student. For example, here A has got 60 out of 100 and B has got 80 out of 200. Now 60 out of 100, as you can see here, this is a fraction where the denominator is 100. So we can say that A's percentage score is 60%. Why? Because it is 60 out of 100. So A has scored 60% marks. And when we try to understand the percentage score of B, we see that B has got 80 out of 200, which is equivalent to 40 out of 100. So we can say that B's percent score or per 100 of score is 40%. And now, if we compare their percentage scores, we come with the right conclusion that A is better than B. Why? Because A has scored 60% and B has scored 40%. So from this, it is very clear that the comparison of performance of students should never be done in terms of actual marks. It should always be done in terms of percentage of marks. Why? Because when we say that A has got 60%, it means A has got the capability of scoring 60 marks out of every 100 marks. And B has got the capability of scoring only 40 marks out of every 100. So that is the reason we always use percentage scores when we are comparing the performance of various students. Why? Because here when we take scores in terms of percentages, we are making the scale common for all the students. 
that means the scale for the percentage of marks is always from 0 to 100. So that is the reason we always use percentage scores when we are comparing the performance of various students. The point here is whenever we use percentage scores, the scale of performance is common for all the students irrespective of their maximum marks. Why? Because percentage is from 0 to 100. So their percentage score should always lie in between 0 to 100. And hence the comparison would be proper if we go for percentages. Similarly, even when we calculate profit or loss, we generally calculate in terms of percentages so that the understanding is very simple. For example, let's say that a businessman makes a profit of 20%. Now, 20% is nothing but 20 out of 100. So, very clearly we can understand that for every 100 rupees which the businessman has invested in his business, he has made a profit of 20 rupees. Similarly, when we say that loss of a person is 5%, it means it is 5 rupees out of every 100 rupees. So for every 100 rupees that has been invested in the business, the loss was 5 rupees. So wherever we use percentages, the idea is to make the comparison or the understanding simple. So that is the significance of percentages. Let us now move on to understand how to calculate a percentage value. Having learned that percentage is nothing but a fraction where the denominator is 100, let us now understand how to convert the given percentage into a fraction and similarly how to express the given fraction in terms of percentage. For example, 50% is nothing but 50 out of 100 and 50 by 100 it can be taken as 1 by 2. So we can say that 50% is equal to 1 by 2. Similarly, 25% which is 25 out of 100 is equal to 1 by 4. Since this is 25 into 1 and 25 into 4. So we can understand that 25% is 1 by 4. So this is how to convert a percentage into a fraction, we need to divide the percentage value by 100. Let's say uh, we have to find out how much is 30% in terms of fraction. So simply we can take 30 divided by 100 and by simplifying this we get 3 by 10. So we can say that 30% is equal to 3 by 10. So a percentage here has been converted into a fraction simply by dividing the given value by 100. And now let us understand how to convert the fraction into percentage. For example, let's say the given fraction is 3 by 8. Now to convert this fraction into percentage, what we need to do is simply multiply the given fraction with 100. So 3 by 8 into 100 will be equal to 37.5. So this can be taken as 37.5%. Similarly, we have the fraction 2 by 5. Now to convert 2 by 5 into percentage, what we need to do is multiply this fraction with 100. So 2 by 5 into 100 will be equal to 40. And this is 40%. So this is how a fraction can be converted to percentage by multiplying the given value with 100. And here again, the fraction has been converted to percentage upon multiplication with 100. So from this we can very clearly understand that there is a definite relationship between a percentage and a fraction. A given percentage can be expressed in terms of fraction by dividing by 100 and a fraction can be expressed in terms of percentage by multiplying with 100. Let us now learn how to do calculations related to percentages. For example, let's take x percent of y. Now this will be equal to, we know that x percent is nothing but x out of 100 or per 100. So x out of 100 into y. So this will be xy by 100. So we can say that x percent of y should be equal to xy by 100. For example, 40 percent of 600 can be taken as 40 upon 100 multiplied by 600. So as zeros get cancelled, we can say that 40% of 600 will be equal to 40 into 6, which is 240. So 40% of 600 is equal to 240. So this is what is important, how to calculate a percentage value for a given value. That is x percent of y is equal to xy by 100. Now as we can see here, we find three types of values in the given equation. One is a percentage value, that is 40%. The other one is 600, which is nothing but the value on which we are calculating the percentage. So it can be taken as the maximum value. And the third one here is 240, which is the actual value or the absolute value. 
so in any given percentage calculation we have these three types of values one is a percentage value the other one is the maximum value and the third one is the absolute value so out of these three any two will be given and we can calculate the third one for example in some cases the question may be 60 percent of what is going to be 360 now to find out the answer let's say 60 percent is 60 upon 100 into this question mark can be taken as x equals to 360 so 60 gets cancelled six times here so we can say that x will be equal to 6 into 100 600 so very clearly 60 percent of 600 is 360 so here again we can see that the percentage value and the actual value was given from which we can find out the maximum value similarly what percent of 900 will be equal to 720 now in this case let's say this is x percent so it can be taken as x by 100 into 900 equals to 720 so as zeros gets cancelled we can say that x equals to 720 by 9 which is 8 so 80 percent of 900 is equal to 720 so as you can see from these three calculations the first one was 40 percent of 600 is equal to what so we were able to find out the answer that is 240 in the second calculation we find that 60 percent of what is equal to 360 so here the percentage value and the absolute value was given and we have found the maximum value and in the last calculation here what percent of 900 is equal to 720 so in this case the maximum value and the actual value was given and we are able to find out the percentage value as 80 percent and all these calculations are based on Davo equation that is x percent of y should be equal to x y by 100. Always the maximum value can be taken as 100 percent and accordingly the other percentage value can be calculated. For example in the first case here we had 40 percent of 600. Now this 600 which is the maximum value can be taken as 100 percent and we were supposed to find out 40 percent of the maximum value. So instead of doing the calculation in this way, we can say that 100% is equal to 600. So 40% will be equal to what? Now by cross multiplying this, we can find out the answer as 40 into 600 by 100, which is equal to 240, which is equal to the answer that we have obtained in the given equation. Similarly, in the second case, we find that 60% of what is equal to 360. Now as you can see here, the maximum value has not been given. But the equation says 60% of that is equal to 360. So very clearly 60% is 360 and we are supposed to find out 100%. So now we can say that 60% is equivalent to 360, 100% will be equal to what? Again by cross multiplying we can find out the required answer. So we can say that this should be equal to 100 into 360 divided by 60. So which again comes out to be 600 as 60 goes 6 times here. And in the last case again, what percent of 900 is equal to 720 was the given equation. And as you can see here, the maximum value is 900. So very clearly, 100 percent is 900. And we are supposed to find out what percent of that maximum is equal to 720. So 100 percent is given and what percent is 720 is to be calculated. So now we can say that 100 percent is equal to 900. So what percent will be equal to 720? So again by cross multiplying we can say that this should be equal to 100 into 720 divided by 900 which comes out to be 80. So 80% 80 of 900 will be 720. That is what is the answer in the given equation. So we can say that 80% of 900 is equal to 720. So as you can see here going by the equation always x% percent of y is equal to xy by 100 where either the maximum value or the percentage value or the absolute value has to be calculated. So as you can see here in these three formats we find that always a percentage value has been given and the other percentage has to be calculated. So simply by cross multiplication we can find out the required answer. So friends one important point that you need to understand here is in every question of percentages always one of the percentage value is specified and the other percentage value is to be calculated. And that can be done simply with the help of cross multiplication. So going by this way of calculation, we can solve the questions very quickly. The next point that we need to understand here is x percent of y is same as y percent of x. Let us understand how is it possible. 
we know that x percent of y is equal to xy by 100. Now xy by 100 can be taken as y into x by 100. Why? Because x into y is same as y into x. And now if we try to split it as y by 100 into x, we can take it as y percent since y by 100 is nothing but a fraction where the denominator is 100. So we can take it as y percent into x. So this is equal to y percent of x. So we find that x percent of y is equal to y percent of x. So always remember that x percent of y can always be taken as y percent of x. This point may be useful in doing certain calculations. For example, we need to find out what is 36% of 50. Now, instead of finding out 36% of 50, if we take it as 50% of 36, the calculation would be much faster. Why? Because 50% of 36 is nothing but half of 36, which is equal to 18. So that is how when we take x% percent of y as y% percent of x, some calculations of these type will be done much faster. Why? Because 36% of 50 takes some time to calculate. But 50% of 36 is simply half of 36, which is equal to 80. Let us now understand how to increase or decrease a given value by some percentage. For example, let us assume that some original value is equal to x. Is equal to x. Now, when this value x is increased or decreased by some percentage, for example, let us take the increase or decrease in the percentage. It is increased or decreased by p percent. Then the new value can be taken as x plus or minus p percent of x. That is nothing but original value plus or minus p percent of the original value. We should use plus when it has increased and we should use minus when it has decreased. So for example, let's say some value x has increased by p percentage. Then the new value can be taken as x plus p percent of x. Similarly, if it has decreased by some percentage p, then the new value can be taken as x minus p percentage of x. For example, let's say that A's salary is equal to 40,000. A's salary is equal to 40,000. Now when his salary has increased by when his salary has increased by 25%, the new salary, let us take it as new salary, A's new salary as AN, it can be taken as 40,000, that is the original salary plus 25% of original salary, which is 40,000. Now we know that 25% of 40,000 is equal to 10,000. So this can be taken as 40,000 plus 10,000, which comes out to be 50,000 rupees. Similarly, let's say that his salary is decreased by 20%. If the salary has decreased by 20%, then the new salary AN can be taken as the original salary, which is 40,000 minus 20% 20 of 40,000. We are using minus sign because here it is a decrease of 20%. So 20% 20 of 40,000 is 8,000. So 40,000 minus 8,000 will be equal to 32,000 rupees. So this is how we can increase or decrease a given value by p percentage as original value plus or minus p percentage of the original value. We should use plus for an increase in the value and minus for a decrease in the given value. So these various points that we have discussed so far will be used in solving various questions from percentages.